Hey, hey, and welcome to Masters and Mentors. I'm your host, Amber Lee Forrester, and we are back for another amazing episode of Masters and Mentors. Today, we get to talk to the powerhouse who is Erica Pittman. Hey, Erica, welcome to Masters and Mentors. Hi, Amber. How are you? I am wonderful, and I'm so super, super, super excited to have you today. You are someone whose career I have watched unfold over the years, and as the managing director, as a marketing executive, an author, and a brand architect, you have had some exciting peaks in your career. You have had some vulnerable transitions in your career, and you have so much wisdom to share. And so I'm really excited that we get the opportunity to speak with you today. So thank you for joining us. You were very intentional in the path that you took. You recognized what your passions were. And instead of looking for work just for money, although that was one of your motivations, you looked for things that were aligned with your passions and what you really love to do. And I will go as far as to say you must be incredibly courageous because you identified a magazine that you wanted to work for and you didn't go and say, but I'll just work for a local paper. You went for the magazine and you got a job with them. So I, it's so important to go for it and to recognize what our drive and our motivation is. And I hear so much of that in your story. So I can really appreciate that. Um, now, for our listeners, for our viewers, I, I want to make sure that we're understanding advertising, marketing, and branding. So will you take a moment and break that down for us? And even um, sharing possibly even a bit of the a part of what how that has evolved over the years as marketing. I went to school and majored in marketing, for example. Marketing is so different now in the age of digital marketing than it used to be. So will you talk a bit about that evolution and, and possibly even how you kept up and stayed fresh um, as, as that evolution was occurring? I don't want anyone that's listening to be discouraged if they don't know what they want to do. What I would urge our listeners and viewers to do is to think about the things that they really enjoy and research what are the jobs or opportunities to make money around those things that they love, right? And so if you're an artist, you don't necessarily have to draw and sell, a visual artist, draw and sell your paintings per se, but you can become an art curator and work in an art gallery, or you can head up an art department for a specific corporation. So it's really having conversations with your, your mentors and the adults around you about the things that you love and understanding the careers that you can create around that and then the jobs and opportunities there are for you to learn how to do those things, right? That's how you kind of get to what you love. I want to make sure they knew that. The differences between marketing, branding versus advertising, which is a, it's a big conversation even in adult world. So marketing is the plan, how you plan on taking a brand, a product, this iPhone, and taking it to the marketplace for people to buy it. That's marketing. Advertising is the tactics and techniques that you use to message to the consumer. So an iPhone commercial, an iPhone ad, an influencer typing on their iPhone phone. That's all advertising tactics that you use based on the marketing that you came up with for your brand. The branding essentially is really about creating a connection for your audience positively to make them want to connect with your brand, purchase your brand, invest in your brand, talk about your brand or product, if you will. So branding is really the the story that you create around whatever the thing or person is and how you want the world to perceive it and connect with it. I love that. that. That breaks it down and really helps us to understand. And if you'll take us just a bit of through some of the steps of your career. What do I want? I want a million dollars. What are all of the steps I think I need to take to get a million dollars, right? And then researching those steps to make sure that that's the right path and then becoming excellent in every single step I take to get to the million dollars. And I'm using that on purpose, right? Because there's this level of excellence that comes into 
every single thing you do that is going to inform the next thing that you do. And what it's also going to do is it's going to start to brand you and create a reputation around you that will speak on your behalf. And let's talk about that. Make that point just about the evolution of marketing. And I say that uh, and I wanted to make sure we spend some time here because as technology continues, which it will with AI and with everything that's going on now, industries will evolve and you can either ride the wave or get left behind. And Erica's career is an example of what it looks like to ride the wave. So a lot of the people that we're targeting, you know, today were born when I started working in an uh, advertising company called, um, excuse me, uh, an advertising agency called Blue Flame. We st I started working there in 09. So a lot of people that are listening were probably born in 09. <laughs> but nonetheless, when I started working there, advertising was very traditional. It was television commercials, newspapers, radio, out of home billboards, very, very basic 101 marketing and advertising. What we were creating was something new in the market that suggested we target key people that have big spheres of influence. And what a sphere of influence is, is how many people me as an individual can affect in my network. So not just my friends, but also my followers, also my community, also um, you know, my, you know, professional world also in my school, right? So all these different areas of that I might be able to identify. And so we were like, how do we tap into people with big spheres of influence and get them to believe about the brand? And then they start to socialize what we already know. So we give them the play and then they go and they use their bullhorn to yell it from the mountaintop. So the difference between marketing before is you have this very top-down approach. I've got a big message, a big idea. I don't care if you believe it or not. I'm just going to show it to you enough times so that you remember it. Now marketing is, I've got an idea of what I want my brand to be. You tell me how you feel about my brand, and then you share it with all of your friends. And then I take your feedback, and I tweak my brand to speak to you and your friends in the way that you want to be spoken to. You did what I often recommend that young people or older people who are even looking to start a business do. You learn on someone else's budget. <laughs> you prove yourself on someone else's budget and time. And then you launch into a space of entrepreneurship where you take that wisdom and that expertise into what your business is. I'm going to tell you, that will save you a lot of money and time. If you don't have that friends and family investment or you don't have that huge sum of money to start up your, your, your company uh, investment to start up your company, learning on someone else's buck is definitely going to be a, a strategy that you want to consider taking. You make a point about entrepreneurship versus being a consultant. And will you share what the difference between entrepreneurship and consulting is for you, for anyone who who may be wondering or thinking, oh, I'm really good at launching stuff. I like to do like Erica does and be a visionary and solve problems and then pass it on to someone else. Maybe I'd be a, a good consultant. What, what, is, what does that mean to be a consultant versus to be an entrepreneur? Entrepreneurship is taking personal ownership of building out a business or an infrastructure for yourself, whatever that is. Um, it could be a service like I provide, or it could be a product like my book or this iPhone or this mouse, right? So it could be a product or service that, that one creates individually and builds themselves. Whereas a consultant is someone that comes in independently to support companies, individuals, institutions, in a specific area of the business. So me as a consultant, I can come in and I can help you come up with the marketing strategy for your phone. I can help you to source the employees that you need to hire for that business. I can help you model out your profit and loss statement for your finances. I can, if I were an attorney, I can help you with legal contracts and standard operating procedures. So I use my skill sets as an individual to support a specific business. And so essentially an, a, a consultant is a business, but it is a business of one.